Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. Today we're back at Holmes Honda again, and I know we've been spending a lot of time here lately with side-by-side -side comparisons, but a lot of you have been saying you want more of that, so we're gonna try and do that, not only here at Holmes Honda, but at other dealerships as well. So what we're going to do in today's video is compare the 2022 model of the Honda Pilot to the 2023. Now I have to give a quick disclaimer here. I shouldn't really have to do this, but there are a lot of people out there that I believe watch these videos just so they can complain and correct people. But based on available inventory, based on the fact that there are only these two pilots available for me to choose from, the 22 model is a trail sport. The 23 model is a touring. Again, it's because this is what was available on the lot here at Holmes Honda. I apologize to those of you who didn't need to hear that, but here's something all of you do need to hear. A lot of the time when you have a new model come along, fully redesigned, such as what we have right here compared to what we have here, there's a pretty large price increase. Not so much in this case. The base price for the 2022 Pilot was $38,000, and $80. It only jumps on the 23 to 39,110. The overall width on the front of the new Pilot increases by 1.1 to 1.2 inches. The rear increases by 1.4 to 1.5 inches. When it comes to the overall design of the front end, on the 23, we're obviously going to have a much more squared off look than that of the 22. The 22 has more of a sloping front end, the sloping hood lines there. You can even see more of the lines in general as far as the differences. The 23, a little more flat, a little bit less on the character lines. Not sure that that's that big of a deal because of the design of the front end here being a lot more squared off than what we had for 22, the previous generation. But that's the direction Honda is going regardless from the A-pillar forward. You're definitely going to see a lot more squared off look on all newer vehicles, especially these SUVs. The headlight design has obviously changed quite a bit, as you can see, as we go from a rather large headlight housing right here. We're going to have the brow up here that's the body color. We're going to have the turn signal indicators here and down here on the lower portion of the bumper, the fog lights. And so that's going to be there. Everything is a lot more slender here. We will have the chrome brow. And again, that's going to be based on trim level, but you can see the overall design. Kind of nice to see that. It isn't body color. You can still see how that looks. Everything is a little bit more slender, goes a little further into the bodywork right here on the front fender. Here are the daytime running lights, the LED headlights. And then we're also going to have an active air curtain right here. The fog lights are located down here. Again, everything's kind of more slender than it used to be. So that's a difference. You can see the difference in the surround on this area of the front end between the two. And then the grill on the 23 is actually larger. This one actually is a little more narrow than what we had before. It's wider but it's not as tall as what we have here on the 2023 model. The same applying on the front end. You can see the front spoiler right here, really just kind of the front lip. That is wider over here on the 21 model. You can see that it's not as wide and not quite as tall. So definitely some big differences where all of that is concerned. And as we start to work our way inward, Again, everything changing with the fender design, the way the hood lines go, as far as everything coming up off of the fender itself to the hood, you'll also notice that here, the fender flares are smaller on the 23 than they are on the 22. And speaking of smaller, we even see a smaller side view mirror. Body color on both on the mirror caps, but as we look from a different angle, you can really see the differences both do have the turn signal indicators built in. The turn signal indicator here in kind of the center portion. And then on the lower portion down here. And I apologize, I know both vehicles are kind of dirty. We are getting painted with pollen right now, so kind of hard to deal with. Trying to just do the best I can with it. I apologize, we'll probably still get some gripes and moans in the comments about that. 
body color on the door handles. And then on the touring trim level, we will notice that we have the chrome trim piece on the bottom. We're gonna have a different design for the roof rails. Notice how the roof rail is a little bit higher. It has a gap right in here. And then on the 22 model, you don't have that gap between, and then it's not quite as tall. So a big difference there changes also with the quarter window. It's a little smaller actually than what we have here. Well, at least a little more slender right here. Maybe not as tall, but it's a little longer than what we have on the 23 model and working our way to the rear. Definitely gonna be some differences. You'll notice the difference on the rear spoiler because it goes right here on the 23 model. It comes all the way down about a little over midway through the rear window as far as where it stops or where it starts, depending on how you want to look at that. And looking at the rear tail lights, instead of becoming more slender back here, they actually widen up a little bit, at least gain some height when compared to the 22. The whole design is different. You'll notice that the tail light housing is going to start right here on this side, but there's nothing down here on this area a little bit more of a slender area up here with your reverse lights and all that good stuff there. On this particular model, everything is pretty much congruent, very consistent with the size. It works its way and then kind of comes down to a point and then finishes off right here. You will have the large Pilot logo in the center of the rear door on the 23 model compared to the smaller Pilot logo down there in the bottom left-hand corner towards the bottom left-hand corner of the 22 model. But one thing that is definitely different are going to be the body lines. You have a little bit more contour as the body works its way out into the bumper right here and then onto that lower portion down there. You don't have the exhaust finishers here on the 22, but on the 23, we do have the exhaust finishers. Let's see if those are actually connected to anything. And as you can see, they are actually not. There is nothing there. It's just a kind of a faux finisher. So in essence, it's kind of the same as what we have over here. There obviously are exhaust pipes. They're just hidden away, but you have a lot more of a squared off look back here. There are some body lines back here to mention, but it's not quite as aggressive looking, or maybe I should say sporty looking, as what we have on the 22. Tell me what you think about that. Do you like the body lines of the 22 more, or do you favor the 23? Now here's something that will most certainly be of interest. There are differences, not much, but you have the same size engine under each hood. Both are 3.5 liter V6 engines, naturally aspirated. So if you like the naturally aspirated route, well, this is a good place for you to go. But the differences are this, 280 horsepower here on the 22, 262 on the torque mated to a nine speed automatic transmission. That is the only transmission available for the 22 and earlier, at least for this particular generation. Over here on the 23 model, it is a different motor. Still the 3.5 liter naturally aspirated Honda V6, but updated. It makes 285 horsepower, 262 on the torque. And instead of the nine speed, now you will have the singular option. It is a 10 speed automatic transmission. And one thing I am a little bit surprised at that Honda didn't do here. The 2023 Honda CRV is the only Honda model I've seen so far, as far as what's been redesigned over the course of the last roughly two years, that has the hood struts that actually keep the hood up, open the hood and keep it up. You don't have to bring the manual prop rod into place as you do on these two. I don't know why that didn't come over to the pilot as it did to the CRV. Now, let's talk about MPGs and see what they're like on both models. 19 city, 25 highway, 21 combined, and 4.8 gallons of gas is what Honda says you should use on your 2022 Honda Pilot. Now let's see what we have on the 2023. 19, 27, 22, and 4.5 gallons of gas per every 100 miles driven. There is a difference here to report where gas is concerned. Gas tank size. The 2022 has a 19 and a half gallon gas tank. The 2023 has an 18 and a half gallon gas tank. Not that that's that big of a deal, but if somebody wants to know, now you know.
Towing numbers remain the same at a max towing of 5,000 pounds between the two models. But what about cargo capacity? Since the 23 model is a little larger, does it have more cargo capacity than the 22? And with the 2022 Pilot, we're looking at cargo capacity numbers of 16 to 16.5 16 cubic feet up to 82.1 to a maximize when you lower all of these seats down in the middle and the third row, 83.9 cubic feet. You do have the floor here that is reversible. You can change it to this side if you want to, if that plastic is gonna be more beneficial than the carpet back here. Both models do come with a spare tire, so that's always good news, no tire repair kits. And just like we saw with the 22 version of the Pilot, you do have the double-sided floor down here with carpet on one side and plastic on the other. But unlike the 22 Pilot, there's more cargo capacity here. 18.6 up to 87 cubic feet. And for those of you who might say, what exactly does that mean? Can you tell us what that means and give us maybe a nice reference? Without giving you all those measurements and inches and taking the time to do that, to give you an idea, you can fit or a cubic foot, we'll say, is the same size as a basketball, or maybe a basketball is the same size as a cubic foot. Just as is the case with both models, you can move these seats back and forth to increase or decrease leg space. I'm gonna put that all the way back, just so you can see how that works and what my leg space is back there. And then we're gonna push the button. It's going to get the seat moved out of the way, and so we will push that up a little bit further so I can hop into the rear seating area and see what the leg room is like. Obviously, you can change the position of the seats and this seat on the right side of the vehicle is reclined back, so that makes a difference, but obviously these seats will go quite far forward from where their position is right now to increase leg space. And we'll just take a quick look around at what it looks like back here with this particular model, with the Trail Sport, the 22 model, before we hop over into the 23 and see what it's like. Okay, one thing, if you really wanna get down to the nitty gritty of what hasn't changed between the two, the buttons that you use to move the seats out of the way. Kinda of interesting to know that, right? But it's there. Some people might wanna know those kind of details. Obviously, you can move these seats back and forth, but I'm going to push this all the way back because I know there is more leg space, a little more space back here in the rear of the 23 model. Let's hop on in and we'll take a look. You do have seating for eight people here, two in the front, three in the middle, and three more back here in this rear section. You can see that I have more space back here automatically compared to what we had in the 22 model over there. And so obviously if you move the seats forward, it's gonna be even better. We do have the air conditioning vents pretty much in the same location, a different size and shape, but you can see what's here. Obviously there are going to be some differences on trim level. We will have the USB port here on the touring trim level and a really big difference, even though I don't have it open right there, there is the one of the chief differences, the panoramic sunroof, something you couldn't get on the 22 and earlier pilots. And yes, here on the 23, you also have the shade. And you also activate the child safety locks here on the rear doors. You don't do that from the driver's side door. That's the same on both models. But let's hop inside here and see what we'll find as far as any kind of controls and air conditioning vents and all that good stuff. So you have your air conditioning vents back here, two of them, two USB ports right here, and the controls for the climate back here in the rear seat area. Obviously tri-zone climate control because you have three, two in the front and single in the rear. And you'll find that you have a pocket back on the rear of each seat. And let's see what the center console, or excuse me, the fold down armrest looks like. The good thing about the way the cup holders are set up like this, you can have a cup in each holder and still use this as an armrest. And like I said, there is your conventional size sunroof for the 22 model. And hopping into the rear seat of the 23 model, we're gonna definitely see some differences back here, but also some similarities. You're gonna have the dual air conditioning vents, everything for climate control here, just like we saw with the 22 model but you'll notice that instead of being on the right side here, 
you're going to have the dual USB ports right in the center. That looks a little bit better, especially if Monk was to review one of these pilots. I guarantee you he would like this a lot better than what he would see over there. Now you don't have the same kind of armrest and cup holder set up here as you do on the 22 model. And this does not matter on trim level as far as the 22 goes, but on the Elite and the Touring, you're going to have this setup right here. So not as high. I think that might be a little bit of an issue for some people because well, this is about where it was in the 22 model. So that's a little bit lower, but there's a reason for that you actually have a release on the front, and I can't show this to you one-handed, but I'll try and put some images on the screen to show you. If you pull that release, you can tilt the seat forward and actually remove it completely, just the middle here, and put it into that area, that storage well in the back, kind of like the Honda Odyssey. You can't take all of the seats out here, but you can take that middle seat out, but like I say, only on touring, only on elite trim levels, but it is an option that's available. And for those who are saying, Tom, show us the remotes. Here is the remote from the 22. You can see that all of the functionality is the same with lock, unlock, remote start. You have the power tailgate that you can open and the panic alarm or the panic button right there. But you can see the differences in the overall appearance from the 22 to the 23. So we'll take a look at the driver's side door panel on the 22 model. You can see the upper and the lower consoles. It's two settings for seat memory and all of the different controls right here. Now you don't have the controls for the power mirrors, those heated power door mirrors. They're located right here as some of the other features are you can see as well. So when you start this model up, here's what the instrument cluster looks like. You can see it does have some animated graphics and not a really bad look, that's for sure. You're gonna have the shifter paddles right here that are in black, and then you're shifting or your steering wheel mounted controls up here for everything. But one big difference, obviously a lot of differences here, the overall design of the dash. It'll be more obvious when we hop into the 23 model and I think we're gonna see this in both. You'll see that kind of flickering effect with a screen that happens occasionally. That is not a Honda issue, it's a GoPro issue, just in case you were wondering. But here we have the angled infotainment screen. Very simple to use, very simple to operate. Here are the multiple views for the rear view camera. There's that flickering effect I was telling you about that is the fault of the GoPro, not the fault of the infotainment screen. So don't blame Honda for that. And then we're gonna have all of our controls for the air conditioning system down here. And then wireless charging, more connectivity up here. We also have the heated seat functionality right here. Sure don't need that today in Northwest Louisiana. On March the 4th, it's too hot to use heated seats. Push button shifter, varying degrees. Some people like it, some people don't. Tell me in the comments which person you are. Here are your cup holders. And something that will definitely be different is going to be the design of the center console. You have what I always think of as a garage door style lid right there, if you wanna call that a lid and then a lot of space down there and additional connectivity options, another USB and another 12 volt to round things out. And the conversation mirror in the 22 model. There you go. Also the sunglass holder. That's one of those multitaskers because you can do multiple things with it. And you can sure see the overall differences between the design of the overall door panels from the 22 to this 23. We're still gonna have our seat memory right here, but the overall design has changed completely. In fact, it's also changed right here. Now you're gonna control your side view mirrors, your heated power adjustable side view mirrors on the door panel, as opposed to here on the dash area, as we saw with the 2022. And we'll start things up and bring the dash to life. It is going to be digital here as well but a completely different look. It looks very similar to what we have seen with the 2022, the 11th generation of the Honda Civic. So you can see the differences there, quite easy to figure out depending on what you like, what you don't. I think this one looks a little more modern, a little better. Tell me what you think in the comments section. You're still going to have those flat black or matte black paddle shifters here if Tom can keep from getting tongue twisted. 
to control the 10-speed automatic transmission compared to the 9-speed over there. Here is what the steering wheel looks like, but I tell you what, overall, you can see the differences here as far as the dash design goes. You have space right here that you didn't have in the 22. This is going to be available on the 23 models, but the biggest difference, obviously, is going to be the infotainment screen. Now it's going to be vertical, 90 degrees. That's going to help to reduce glare in, I think, just about every situation. Now, if you were to open the shade up here for the sunroof, let's see if we can do that correctly. I'm just going to open it up just a little bit. If you open it all the way, well, that might contribute to issues with glare, but it is what it is. Whatever you need to do, you can do with that. Pretty much the same look here and same design with the infotainment screen as far as the rear view cameras go. But one thing that is different is you have an area out here that's kind of almost like a shelf. It's really not that big, but I guess you could, if you have a small enough hand, put your hand up there or maybe rest your finger and do this. I don't know. Kind of an interesting look, but you can see what you have here. There's your built-in navigation and all that good stuff. Very simple to use. It may have a different look from the 2022 model we just stepped out of into this 23, but it's just as simple to use, maybe a little more simplified. Here are the controls for the air conditioning, all the controls here for the heated seats. You're going to have the heated seats right there. And again, the same basically system, it just looks different. We're gonna have wireless charging here, our connectivity options as well, another push button shifter. So that's not something that really has changed the cup holders right here. But one thing that has changed, gone is the garage door style console lid. You can open that up. It is sitting higher, so that's nice. It would be nice to see it maybe, I don't know, a little bit higher, a couple of inches. Although, you know, you can use that as an armrest if you want to, but it depends on how tall you are. But I do like the fact that you don't have those fold-down armrests anymore. This is a little bit easier to use. In my personal opinion, I wish it was a little bit further forward and maybe a couple of inches higher. Like I was saying earlier, that would just make it more comfortable to put my arm on there if I choose to use that as an armrest or if the passenger does. But overall, you can see the differences between the 2022 and the 2023 Honda Pilots. All right, tell me what you think down in the comments. Which version of the Pilot do you like more? Maybe there's some things you like about the 2022 that you don't like about the 2023 or both ways. So maybe there's some options on the 23 you wish the 22 had had. But tell me what you think. I'm always curious to get your feedback on these vehicles and see what your thoughts ultimately are. Gotta say a special thanks to my friends here at Holmes Honda for loaning me both of these pilots for the day and all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing and learning about, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.